What's up guys? It's Kevin from RetroTech again, and I got all these sweet consoles behind me, and I didn't really plan on what I was going to talk about today, so I think I'm just going to talk about the Atari 5200 again. Just kidding. Today we're going to talk about the Sega Master System. Roll the intro. The Sega Master System is a lesser known console of the NES era here in North America, making its debut two years after the NES in 1987. But in my opinion, it was a better console due to its hardware advantages over the NES. The Sega Master System sported a 3.57 MHz CPU with 24 to 40K of total system memory, with 16 to 32K of that allocated to VRAM and the remaining 8K used for main system memory. Compare that to the NES and its 1.79 MHz CPU, 2K of VRAM, and 2K of system RAM. If we dig a little deeper into this, we can see that the Sega Master System was quite impressive for its time. The Sega sports 64 colors displaying up to 32 of them on screen at any one time, with a sprite size as little as 8x8 and as big as 16x16, 16 16, with a resolution of 256 by 226 pixels. But if you're lucky enough to live in PAL or CCAM region, that was 256 by 240 It had 4 channel audio. Compare that to the NES with its color palette of 52 colors with a maximum of 16 on screen at once, a sprite size of 8x8 up to 8x16, and a resolution of 256x240, rounding off with 5 audio channels. Combining all of this, we can see that the Sega had a technically superior console. Sega also had native support for RGB using SCART. While it wasn't readily available here in North America, many parts of the world, including Europe or Japan using the JP21, could benefit from this. Or you can get a SCART to HDMI adapter for modern equipment, but that is another topic entirely. There was one thing Nintendo had that Sega didn't, software licensing agreements. This restricted many developers from publishing games on any console other than Nintendo's. Add to that the already great lineup of Nintendo's first party games such as Zelda and Super Mario Bros. and you can see a compelling reason why many people never heard of or played Sega's early consoles. And with Nintendo's now famous Mario series of games, Sega had some serious ground to cover. That isn't to say Sega didn't have some great games though. Many of my favorite games were available on the Sega Master System. Some of these include a few of the Sonic games. Fantasy Star, R-Type, Wonder Boy, and the Alex Kidd series. Nintendo had that instant recognition with Mario being their mascot. Most people today could pick Mario up out of a lineup and tell you who it is. That's not to say that Sega didn't have their own mascot, but he's little less known and if I showed you a picture of this, you probably would have no idea who it was. But if you saw a picture of Sonic the Hedgehog, you'd probably know exactly who I was talking about. Many people didn't even know that that wasn't Sega's official mascot until 1991. But that is Alex Kidd, and he had many great games, making appearances in games such as Alex Kidd in Shinobi World, which is one of my favorites. Actually, I like that game a little bit more than Shinobi itself. The Sega Master System had games available on multiple formats. You had your regular game cartridge, slightly smaller than your NES cartridges at the time, but you also had games available on game card. These are about the size of a credit card, just slightly thicker. The port in which the game cards were inserted also had other uses. Most notably, the use of the 3D adapter which allowed you to use stereoscopic 3D back in the late 80s. You heard me right, stereoscopic 3D. As a matter of fact, it used the same technology as many of the modern TVs used today using active shutter glasses. While the list of games that supported this function was short, they were very entertaining. But you'll have a hard time using them on modern equipment because you're probably going to need to go pick yourself up an old CRT TV. Some of the other hardware available on the system was the standard two button Sega Master System controller. 
you have the light phaser, which function very similar to Nintendo's zapper, but again, this probably won't work unless you have a CRT or old tube television. Another notable thing is you can use your original Sega Genesis controllers on the Sega Master Systems and they'll work with almost every game. There are other controller types available too, from paddles to flight sticks to trackballs which give you that kind of arcade experience. You can even modify your original Sega Master System controller to be used on the Atari 7800. That's all for today's episode. If you enjoyed it, give me a thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe to get more content from me in the future. And I'll see you guys in the next video.